Good morning, everyone. This is Nicole Aliyev with Karis Realty. And today we're going to talk about all things mold. My guest today is George Guevara. And George is the chief operations officer of a company called Green Home Solutions. George, welcome. Thank you, Nicole. How are you doing today? Great, great. <laughs> nice and misty morning over here. Yeah, very humid. Very humid today. George, tell me a little bit about Green Home Solutions and the services you offer. Uh, well, we were founded in 2015 and we're based out of Gaithersburg. Uh, we serve the entire uh, Maryland metropolitan area. Um, we offer mold remediation, air quality testing, uh, odor remediation, pretty much anything to do with mold, we try to take care of it. So. And, and typically, you know, the impetus for people calling you, is it that, you know, some disaster has happened and they're calling or is it, you know, they've had a bad home inspection or somebody's found something in the home? What What's the typical impetus? Typically, it's all three. Uh, right now, with the real estate market being the way it is, we are getting a lot of calls on issues found in home inspections. Uh, we do get a lot of calls from homeowners that may be experiencing allergies to mold. So we come out and do some air testing for them to find out what their issue may be. Um, and sometimes it is a catastrophic event, such as a basement flood that will that will cause mold or a roof leak that will also cause mold in the attic. So we, we typically get all three. They're really all over the all over the map. And now, if, how would you know if you had an allergy to mold? Because you said that a lot of people call because they find they've got an allergy to mold. Any mm -hmm. typical symptoms to be looking out for? It's the very typical of a hay fever, uh, itchy, you know, itchy eyes, runny nose and that kind of thing. Uh, right. Most molds can trigger a hay fever type reaction. So in some people, some people are very sensitive to it and some people aren't. Oh, wow. OK. And and so tell me, um, what, are, what are some of the most common issues that you find, let's say, in homes? And then we can talk about businesses, too. OK. Typically, you know, what we find in a home is it's there's been an issue, maybe a water intrusion event in the basement. And, you know, they're, they're that, getting down there. They see something a little bit funny. Um, it's typically uh, a lot in unfinished basements in the in the ceiling joists is where we see a lot of mold up in there. Also around HVAC units where there's a lot of condensation, which will uh, cause mold to build up as well. Uh, also, uh, typically with basements, you know, there's usually not a lot of circulation. It's usually a high humidity area, uh, especially at this time of year in this area. It's very humid. Uh, so dehumidifiers can help with that. But we're, it's typically in basements is where we see most of it or if they've had a some kind of water leak in the kitchen or bathroom. And now tell me, how long can the mold live on if the original source of wetness has disappeared in a basement? So, for instance, if somebody had a, a leak and they thought they dried it out, how long can it live on? Uh, it can live. I mean, if, if it gets behind the substrate, it can, it can live, live there for a very long time. Uh, that's typically why we, we, you know, we recommend remediation as quick as you see it. So that way we can try to kill the mold, mold from spreading. Mold, wow. mold loves to go airborne. And when you disturb mold, it goes in the air and it looks for a safe place to go. So although you may not see it, in one area, once you try to maybe home remedy it, it will go to another area in the home and you could just actually be causing more issues. Oh, wow. And I know that uh, one of the things that it is uh, that is quite common in homes is actually also to find it in some of the older attic spaces, right, where there's not proper roof ventilation, especially on the north north side. Yes, exactly. Uh, typically also with attics, you know, there, there's very little air circulation. It's also a high humidity area. Um, and it's usually caused by some sort of water event. I mean, usually they have a little bit of a roof leak. It's been an older roof. Um, they get a little bit of water in there. Uh, typically, the, the, the mold we'll see up in there is called Penicillium aspergillus. Um, and it grows on wood. It loves wood. So anything we get, you know, in an attic, usually that's what we're seeing. Uh, it could be a black mold, uh, either Cladosporum or Stachybotrys. So we, we do see a variety of them in attics. But, you know, typically towards the north end, because if, if you look at your house on the outside where people get the algae on their siding, it's typically the north end of the home. So it can be the same thing with mold. And I suppose a lot of people also have venting going into their roof from whether it be dryers or, you know, just bathroom vents, et cetera, if they're not properly vented out. So that exactly. could be a source of, of the moisture. Exactly. It creates condensation up in there, which can lead to mold. So, yes. Right. And and you mentioned like black mold. Is there, is there a particular kind of mold that is worse than anything else? Uh, well, you know, in the mold business, we'll say that no mold is good. Um, it really depends on people's, you know, uh, sensitivity to it. Uh, the, the the worst kind you really want to get that we're seeing, we see the most of in, in, in this area is called Stachybotrys. Uh, it is a, typically a black mold. It is not good to breathe in. You don't want to be around it. Um, it can cause some severe reactions in some people. So, uh, but it's also, a, it can be a slow grower and it's usually caused by a water event. Uh, if you find Stachybotrys inside your home, it's not supposed to be there. 
Um, it is found in the soil outside, but it's not supposed to be inside your home. So if you have, you know, the black mold and it's, and it's diagnosed as stachybotrys, it's not supposed to be inside the home. So you would typically want to get that remediated as quick as possible. And, I, you know, I've heard of some uh, kind of home treatments where people start using things like bleach. What happens if you start using bleach on mold? Okay, well, well bleach, as we know, is a stain remover. And so bleach may remove the stain of the mold. Uh, but what it can actually do is, uh, being a water-based uh, 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 solution, you can actually be feeding the root of the mold inside the substrate. So although you may see it all gone on the surface, what you've done is provided that root of that mold with more moisture and allow it to grow even more. And it may re it probably will reappear at a later date once it has time to spread again. So, so it's uh, actually really worse to use bleach than anything else. Well, well plus well, they'll, they'll spray it down with the bleach. And then they scrub it and then the mold goes airborne. So you've kind of maybe moved the mold to another area, but you've also fed the root inside the substrate. You've given you've given that plant water is what you've done. So you've really created more of a worse issue. Right. And so is there any form of mold that people can remove themselves? Uh, we really don't recommend it because, you know, you can look at mold and you can look at it and say, you know, that looks like mold to me. And it is. But really. You know, in the mold business, we want to know what kind of mold it is so we can find out if that may be causing the person's issue because they may be allergic to different kinds of mold. But, you know, typically if they're having hay fever type symptoms, there's mold in that house. And we need to get it remediated. So we really don't recommend people treating it themselves. It's really not a good idea. And now how long does it take? Say you do have a water event in the house. How long does it take for the mold to start forming? Uh, it can start forming pretty much as soon as things start to dry up, which would be, you know, the next day or so. Wow. Uh, if you've ever if you've ever had a flood in your basement, the first thing you want to do is come in and get it dried out as quick as possible because that will help um, to keep the mold from growing. However, with some water events, they're behind drywall. People don't notice them, and all of a sudden they have mold, and they didn't know they don't know where that mold came from. That's usually comes from a water event in the basement. Is usually what we see. Right, and that's actually what happened to me. I, we had a water event in the basement many years ago. And it was only you know we had a home inspection done, and uh, they discovered mold in the basement, which we didn't even know about. We had no sign of, and it was in the base of a cupboard. Um, and uh, it was from many, many years ago when we had that water event, and we thought we'd dried it out, but there it was. Yeah. And that's how I met you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 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 and that's typically what happens. I mean, um, most people don't realize that they've even had a water event, or they don't realize they have mold. Um, I mean, I'm working mold, and I've got a little bit of mold in my house as well. We just don't have any reactions to it, so I don't get overly concerned. But if I do go to put my house on the market, it's going to show up in an inspection. I'll have to get it remediated. Um, typically, what I'll tell people is if you if you think you're going to be putting your house on the market soon, it's it maybe best to get a home inspection done before you put it on the market. That way you can fix whatever issues that may come up in a home inspection so it doesn't kill your deal. So, And what's involved in a mold inspection? Do you, t do you test the air quality and find out what kind of molds or is it visual inspection? How do you typically go about doing that? Uh, we do it several ways. Um, one, we can we do do visual visual inspections. That'll kind of let us know if there's issues with the grading around the home that could be causing the water coming in. If there's a clogged gutter, uh, gutter issues are big for causing uh, issues in basements because the, the water flows over the gutter and goes right by the foundation, creates a moisture, and that's when it gets in. Uh, we can do air quality sampling, uh, which is done through an air machine that, that takes an inside sample and an outside sample of air, and then we compare those two to see what the difference is. Uh, we can also let's do a swab test, which is where we take a, like a long Q-tip and we run it over the mold, uh, and then we ship it off to a, a third-party lab in Florida. We do not do our own testing. It's done by a third-party lab, and then that, that test will come back typically within 48 hours, letting us know whether or not it is mold, and if so, what type. Okay. And now, are there any surfaces that are more susceptible to mold? Pardon? Are there any surfaces that are more susceptible to mold than others? Uh, wood, uh, wood especially, drywall, any kind of wood substrate. Um, it... Mold loves wood. It loves drywall, you know, anything like that. Uh, if you have carpet and you have a water event in your basement, typically if you pull up your carpet, you'll see mold on the tack strips because it's a wood-based substrate and, and it's got room to grow there. So wood, wood and drywall are your two main culprits. So let's talk a little bit about the treatment process. How do you go about treating mold in a home and how friendly are the products that you're using both to pets and humans? Okay, a good, great question. Uh, typically, once we once we've you know determined that it actually is mold, uh, and and eliminated the source of the mold, I mean that's the first thing you have to do with with the mold. You have to if you have a water intrusion, before you can really fix the mold problem, you have to fix the water intrusion problem, or the mold may come back. Um, what we do is we we vacuum all the surfaces down with a HEPA vacuum, 
you know, we come in with a solution called FiberLock, which is about 13 to 16% hydrogen peroxide. And we spray it down with that. And then we'll either scrub it or wipe it off with a, with a brush or a cloth. And then we treat it with our, uh, our treatment called uh, Oceanic, which is an enzyme-based product that really, it kills the protein in the mold. It keeps the mold from coming back. So we'll typically seal off the area for about three days after we do the, the fogging treatment. Let that area sit, let the enzymes do their work, and then the area is free to go back in after that. So oh, that's awesome. our, 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 our products are pet and kid friendly after the three days. We've had no uh, adverse reactions. However, if there's an underlying health condition for someone, we do uh, send them the, the material safety data sheet, and they can take that to their physician and get that checked as well, just if they want to be entirely sure that it's, they're not going to have any issues to the enzyme that we're using. And so tell me, are there any practical things that people can be doing to avoid getting mold in their basements? You've mentioned things like making sure the gutters are clean. Um, I would imagine just making sure that, you know, air is circulated in areas like basements. Exactly. Uh, one of the first things you can do is control relative humidity. Um, oftentimes we'll go into a basement and the humidity level is between 50 and 60 percent. That's typically a little bit high. Uh, you want that humidity between 45 and 50 um, that will help, you know, keep the moisture out of the air. The other thing you can do is have a, a certified HVAC technician install additional vents in the basement to create more air circulation or even a ceiling fan. And also control any moisture. Uh, are, the, are the pipes going out, like you said, the dryer vents, are they insulated and are they going out of the home properly? That will keep the condensation level from building up on those pipes and that kind of thing and will keep the humidity level down in the basement. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so tell me, what's the worst you've seen and treated? Oh, we've seen some nightmares. Um, we are we are on a uh, potentially on a project now. It was a foreclosed home, and it's been uh, sitting empty for quite some time. And the relative humidity in the basement was seventy percent, which was way high. There was no air running in that home, and every level was covered in mold. It's almost like a, it's going to be a complete tear out to really get rid of it. So um, that was that was a pretty bad one. We just saw that last week. So we're, we're bidding on so that. So when you say right a complete now. tear out, what exactly do you have to do in a situation like that? And, so and that, and that for the rehabbers. Yeah, and, and that's a particular situation. That drywall has to come out. It is so heavily impacted um, that to, to, to the best way to get rid of that mold is one, let's remove the drywall and then let's treat everything else that was affected by that mold. Um, mold what leaves stains. What wood underneath that? So the wood struts to the building. Can, is that yeah. more easily treated than the drywall? Or does the wood have to come out too? Yeah, we, we remove the drywall and then and then also uh, you know do the HEPAVAC and then the scrubbing, the fire knock, and then also the woods the wood with our uh, with our enzyme. Um, it's, it's typically a pretty big process. You know, mold mold leaves stains. It's almost like when you were a kid and you went outside to play in the yard and you got a grass stain on your jeans, and your mom would be all upset with you because the grass stain isn't going to come out of your jeans no matter how much you wash them, right? Well, the grass is going off your jeans, but the stain is still going to stay there. Mold does the exact same thing. It stains. So even after it's clean, sometimes people will see staining. Um, and that's normal. So, but there are paints that can also help, you know, keep that staining to a minimum. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. So now tell me, how much does it cost? Is there, is there a kind of average cost per square foot or do you do it by the home by the project what how do you how do you give somebody an idea of what they should expect uh it will like every different you know it's got different different number of bedrooms different number of bathrooms you know different kind of thing mold is, is the exact same way uh first we have to do the air test or or swab test to determine if it is mold and then it really depends on the area to be treated uh, we have a, what we call unconditioned areas, which are attics and crawl spaces, which are a little bit harder to work on. Or we have a conditioned area, which may be a finished how we got done. Um, right now, our, our current prices for air testing are $260 for an indoor and an outdoor sample. Um, and then once again, you get results from that within 48 hours. Uh, typically, we have to do a treatment. It's typically done by the square foot, and that ranges anywhere from about $1.50 to $3.50 a square foot, depending on the area. So, Wow, super. So uh, how can people reach Green Home Solutions? Oh, they can reach us very easily. Our phone number is 301-591, available on the web at greenhomesolutions.com, and you can just type in your zip code, and uh, we'll pop up. Uh, we're also on Facebook, Green Home Solutions of Maryland, and we're also on Thumbtack. Uh, you can Google us. We're, we're getting a very large social media presence, so we're working on uh, – Get our name out there a little bit better, but the, the best way to register is by phone. Try to 
give you a pretty good idea what problem you may be facing over the phone. Super. George, thank you again. Um, and thanks to all who are watching. I was speaking with George Guevara, of, who is Chief Operations Officer of Green Home Solutions. This is Nicole Aliyev with Karis Realty. I'd love to be your realtor. I'd love your referrals. Uh, give me a call on 301-305-5169 or check out my website on Nicole Sells Frederick. Have a great day, everyone.